I think we're live. We're going to let the uh, audience catch up before we start the broadcast in about 5-4. Hey, Mazzy Bear, who's a good girl tonight? All right. Welcome to Mixing Night. I'm your host, Ken Lewis. I have the weirdest resume in the entire music industry. Check it out at KenLewis.com. I'm credited on 104 gold records. I really am. And I have a plug-in? What? I have a plugin, and I have a plugin company. Who knew? I would have never. Anyway, that's happening. Green Hoss, Green Hoss. It's available tonight, right now. Everybody who pre-sold uh, bought the pre-sale. Thank you so much. Your licenses should be in your inbox right now. And uh, Green Hoss is available right now at MixingNightAudio.com. MixingNightAudio.com. You can pick up your copy there. You can pick up a demo installer if you want to check it out for 14 days before buying it. But trust me, you're, you're going to love it. And what's this counter right here? Oh, that's not even right. Uh, let me fix that. Because right now, uh, you have about 15, 16 minutes left on the pre-sale. Uh, we ran the pre-sale until 8.20 p.m. You have until 8.20 until that counter's done. I can't stop it. It's completely out of my control. It goes from $39 to $49, probably permanently. I don't think I will ever put it on sale again. Get it now. Uh, so, you know, uh, a portion of the sales of Green Haas will go towards funding this show, improving this show, and growing this free Mixing Night broadcast for all of you. So I ask you, as my ambassadors, please, <laughs> and you, my ambassador, Mazzy, uh, please, please tell everybody, oh, don't break your iPad. <laughs> <laughs> so, I gotta be careful with... No, I just did it again. So, okay, okay. Please tell people about Green Haas. Word of mouth is literally everything to a young upstart company like ours. And trust me, nobody knows we exist yet. Nobody. Except for you guys. And you are our best ambassadors to let people know. And if you notice the show is getting even better over the next few months, pat yourself on the back because we all have Green Haas and you guys and girls to thank for it. Uh, we have been we've been working on this damn thing for like nine months, and it never ever would have happened without the show. Thank you to all of you. Who the fuck? Uh, and uh, I, tonight I have a crazy cook up using Green Haas, tons of automation flying everywhere. I'm gonna show you all the how to use it and how to get some really incredible tones out of it. That's coming up later on. Okay, on to mixing night. I'm your host Ken Lewis. Thanks for joining us tonight. Lori and I will tell you about the story of how Green Haas went from a twinkle in our eye to a full fledged plug in in nine months gestation period. Oh my God, it was like birth and a child. Okay, tonight the true story of the phone call from Kanye West that led me to record the guitars on the smash hit All Falls Down, and then consequently re-record the guitars on the smash hit All Falls Down, and then convince them to use the re-recorded guitars. All of that coming up tonight, and then this is actually the cool part of the segment. All right, Matt. All right, Maz, you get a treat. Uh, you know, you're so... Lay down. Hey, lay down. Come on. Good girl. Stay. Okay. The cool part of the Kanye segment is I'm going to pull up the original and I'm going to use uh, Isotope RX-8 on it and I'm going to remove the original uh, guitars, which is mind-boggling to begin with. And then I am going to use the original guitar that I played the parts on uh, All Falls Down on and the original microphone, which is a Sony C800G sitting right to my right. And... Uh, uh, and I'm going to recreate the parts live on the fly for you. And then I'm going to match the sounds to the original. And then I'm going to A-B it on the fly and let you guys uh, see see if uh, if I actually really did play the original live. I think I did. Uh, and uh, So that's coming up uh, maybe like 8.30, I think. Maybe 8.25. I'm going to do that pretty early. Okay, we're launching a brand new beat challenge tonight. Oh, it is so good. <laughs> we're using only Arturia sounds. It's going to be a big Arturia night. Um, uh, for the starter that I cooked up, I used all Arturia sounds in the starter. And uh, the winners, it's sponsored by Arturia this time, the winners get these uh, interfaces. Bonafide interface. All right, this is a 192K, two in, two out interface. It's 149 bucks. Um, and they have a one in. So winner gets a two in, two out. Second and third place get uh, one in, 
uh, two out. That's launching the Beat Challenge tonight. Big prizes coming at you. Um, uh, and uh, I use some Arturia stuff to show you the greenhouse stuff. Oh, it's so good. Oh, man. Um, did you know that right now, creative people like me and you literally all over the world are tuning in live, probably from your studios. Everybody let us know where you're coming from. Let me know what you've been creating lately. Drop your city in the comments and represent. Jump on that chat roll. Interact with the truly awesome Mixing Night community. Ah, check us out over at Discord between shows. Make sure you get those speakers up tonight though, or those good headphones fired up tonight because we have, are you even, are you ready for this show? I don't know if you are, okay. We, we have Sprint Mixing, question answering, plug-in company launching, I'm going to break this iPad and green hossing, Marcus Manderson Mystery Beat Challenge, starting instrument identification, ear training. Oh, you are not ready for ear training tonight. It's so good. I love this one. It's my favorite. Tap in a friend to the broadcast right now. Download the ear training worksheet linked in the description of the broadcast you're watching right now. It's in there. Download the ear training worksheet, tap in a friend and challenge them. See how you do. Uh, everybody posts their uh, results up on the chat roll. It's great. I love watching the chat roll uh, the day after the show. Okay, I think that's gonna be about nine o'clock. It's a fun one. Real world shit around here. Okay, so if you didn't know what this counter is, if you're just tuning in, we are, Green Haas is available. You can go get it. Green Haas is available. So, um, this is the countdown for the end of presale at 8.20 p.m. in 12 minutes. Presale ends $39, goes to $49. I can't stop it. I usually don't sell you guys shit, but we've been building this plugin for nine months and plus. I think it's totally awesome. So, um, And all the, man, I've been giving it to a bunch of my heavy hitter friends and they've been raving about it, which is super, super, super flattering. Um, okay, so the Sprint Mix tonight is by awesome independent Australian artist, Sean Frain. That is awesome. Independent Australian artist, Sean Frain, S-E-A-N-F-R-A-Y-N-E. -E. Uh, it's Sean Frain Music at Instagram and Spotify is Sean Frain. Uh, I'm gonna sprint mix an uh, as yet unreleased single coming up in a couple months. The song is called Get Up and Go. Uh, I just mixed this for him, and I love the song. It's a real high-energy, fun uh, song, and he's a killer artist, so I thought this would be a really fun one to sprint. And um, But, but Ken, but why? Why sprint mixing? Why do you want to mix so fast, Ken? It's, it's not about how fast I can mix. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with building your instincts so that mixing is not a labor that mixing comes effortlessly, that your decision making is one after the other after the other and you don't uh, uh, labor over and overthink your decisions and then every fifth or sixth decision you back up and you assess the, the whole landscape and you figure out what the mix needs and you dig back in. Mazzy Bear, you are being really spoiled tonight. You lay down, lay down. Hey, chuffers, lay down. All right, good girl. Yeah, parenting, I tell you. Okay, so sprint mixing trains your gut, your instincts, gets you to believe in... Uh, actually, the best thing about sprint mixing is it sheds the technology. It really gets you to listen to what is coming out of the speakers and stop thinking about what the next plugin you're going to use is because most of the pros don't use anywhere near the amount of plugins that you probably think they use. Okay, I'm going to shut up and start sprint mixing. Uh, we have green house masks. I love these so much. 10 minutes left on the presale. Get it while you can get it. Uh, I am, where is Sean Frayne? Get up and go, Sean Frayne. Uh, we always set the lighting moods around here. So it is sprint mix time again at mixing night. This is Ken Lewis. It is Greenhouse launch day. If you bought it already, the license is in your inbox. Thank you so much for supporting Mixing Night. Uh, Lori's going to be on the show later to talk about the story and evolution of Greenhouse. It's going to be such a fun broadcast. All right, I'm going to put this down here for a second, and I've got to have a sip of coffee. Sorry. If you're not on the cold brew iced coffee game, you just, I just don't even, how... I mean, get on it. Uh, okay, 10 minutes on the clock. I hope this is good. Boom. Mixing night. Sean Frame. Get up and go.
I needed that base. Greenhouse is all over this mix, by the way.
You're such a I love you, baby, I know it's hard on you Some days it feels like your dreams won't come true oh, Forget your second thoughts, no matter what you do Don't give up, because just get up and go I love you, baby, I know it's hard on you oh, Some days it feels like your dreams won't come true I am Ken Lewis. That was Sean Frayne. Get up and go. So give Sean Frayne some support. Stream him at uh, Spotify. This song is not out yet. I always bring you guys the hottest unreleased songs before they're out. Uh, I think Sean's going to drop this in a couple months. Uh, and good luck, Sean. Uh, I think you got a Halloween release coming out as well. So good luck with that. Um, let's go to a little bit of Q&A. Eric Wickman asks... Uh, I can't see that. Hey, Ken, uh, how might you saturate a bass that is not being heard on small speakers? Um, well, Greenhouse could help with that. Typically, um, I would uh, use a fast attack, fast release limiter like an L1 uh, or an L2, um, something like this. And the key is fastest attack, fastest release. So this is a zero attack time uh, brick wall limiter. And this is a zero release time when that blue light is off. And that's going to give you the buzziest 808, uh, depending on you, you set your threshold, depending on how buzzy you want it. Um, and then uh, 
the, the one thing about it is sometimes it creates overtones that are out of key, out of tune with your song, so you got to be careful. A lot of times I will tune an 808 before I hit it with a, a limiter, and then I will tune it again after because it does strange things. So not always, but you know, use your ears; they'll tell you. Uh, Rude boy asks. Hey, Ken, uh, artists I work with tend to not have the stems to the instrumentals they choose. <laughs> uh, preach. Uh, what's your best advice on mixing records without the instrumental stems? Boy, I, I hate doing it. But I think, um, I'll tell you, let me, let me give you the most incredible answer to that that I never would have thought about until this moment. The Isotope RX-8 might be a lifesaver. That shit is bananas. And um, I can't really give you a full demo of it right now, but I'm actually I'm going to show it to you later. Or well, I'm, you'll hear the net results, but if I can just real quick show it to you. I mean, this shit. So... Did you ever watch uh, like the CSI um, dramas on TV? And they always get to the part where uh, they do some crazy shit with audio. And you're just like, yeah, okay, bridge too far. Everybody knows that that's impossible. Well, uh, uh, RX-8... I the shit I'm using it for is like you can so let me give you the fast answer. RX8 will split out your drums from your melodies from your vocals. It will split your beat into at least four different sections that you have incredibly more control over. It will even preserve the integrity of the reverb specific to the instruments that it's pulling out. So if it pulls out a snare drum with a big reverb on it, the the reverb on the snare after it extracts it from a dense mix still sounds just like the reverb on the snare. It's mind-blowing. Um, so you could dissect it like that, give yourself more control, add in the vocals, give it a real mix. If you don't have all the money for RX-8 because it ain't cheap um, and you don't want to invest in yourself, then, uh, you know, you can use an MSEQ like uh, um, BX Digital V3 is my go-to. Uh, for MS, always has been, always will be. Until I put out my own MS EQ, then, you know. Uh, <laughs> probably never. Um, okay, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So, sometimes on the instrumental, you can carve out a bit of... So, this is middle side. This only affects what's in the dead center of your mix, which is usually kick, snare, lead vocal, bass line, hi-hat sometimes. Um... And this only affects what's on the sides. So if I dip a little bit um, at, say, 3K, I am probably turning down some of the impact of the snare, but I'm also creating a little bit of a pocket for the lead vocal to sit in because those are the enunciation frequencies of a lead vocal, generally. And you're basically saying, okay, the lead vocal can sit in here a little bit lower than it would have been able to otherwise, and otherwise it would have been so loud it sounded like karaoke. So, uh, and, you know, something else I do, sometimes you'll find uh, in interesting frequency bands to widen, not this wide. This is super wide. You do, oh my, you spoiled little, uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, so this is the side section. So this will take whatever band you select and widen it out a little bit. So sometimes I try and hug the instrumental around the lead vocal when I only have an instrumental to work with. And find the most interesting things to emphasize um, on the sides of the of the instrumental and keeping the focus on the lead vocal without it sounding too karaoke-ish. Uh, Abraham Knowlton asks uh, from the chat roll, Hey, Ken, uh, how have you noticed your mixing change over the last 10 years or so uh, going from radio to streaming? That's a great question. Uh, I'll tell you, it changed drastically going from analog to digital. Digital, like huge. Because, uh, you know, we didn't have this, like, brick wall limiting that we had to kind of achieve. Um, you, you only had tape, and that wasn't... Are you all right, babe? What's wrong? Um, so, anyway, uh, what was the... Oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> oh, last 10 years, streaming to CDs. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, here's the, here's the big difference that I think... You know, Spotify is the big bad devil. Uh, yeah, but um, right now is there are more artists living solely off of music income 
worldwide than at any other time in human history, and that's because of streaming. Um, so hate on streaming all you want. It pays out shit, but it, it allows more musicians to survive than ever before. So if you're not getting paid on streaming yet, you just got to put in some time. But the thing about streaming that was great, back to your question, Abraham Knowlton, is <laughs> streaming allowed you to find a niche audience and develop your niche and not have to hit radio or major services. And it allowed music to get creative and expand again. And it didn't have to only fit on radio in order to work. And that changed musical creativity in drastic ways that um, if just are... I see people going gold that I've never heard of before because you can find your niche, grow your niche, and become a really successful artist without the rest of the world even knowing that you walk the earth, which 10 years ago you really couldn't do. So it's a brave new world for music in that regard. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's my thought. Okay, I'm going to get to Kanye West. Um, as much as Mazzy would love me to stay on the Feeding Mazzy Treats train... Um, which will happen, of course. Of course, Mazzy, you're going to get treats out the wazoo tonight. So, Mazzy has kept us very healthy during the pandemic. I've never had a dog that insists on getting a walk every day. And if you don't, you're in trouble. See, this, like, insists getting a treat, this is her with a walk all day until she gets it but it has forced us to walk a lot and we really have come to appreciate outdoors and uh nature again during the pandemic it's been really great and she's kept us healthy so thanks maz you get some more treats tonight okay i'm gonna have to move you maz so speaking of rx8 this is what rx8 did so listen to all falls down this is the this is i pulled this off the cd so i'm not you know this is off the cd i didn't pull this session up off of my archives oh, it is, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, falls down. this is the real one baby i'm telling you oh, 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 up oh, it is, oh, side, side. okay so i played those guitars and that guitar back there is the one that I played. Well, the one that I played that you're hearing right there. But I wanted to recreate these guitars live for you tonight during mixing night. And uh, so I ran RX-8 on this thing and I removed the guitars. Listen. Oh, it all, yeah. all falls down. This is the real one, baby. I'm telling you. Oh, 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 stand up. Oh, it it all. Side. Then I added a kick drum so I'd have something to play along to. And in a minute, I'm going to try and recut these guitars and see if I can very accurate, uh, accurately, accurately recreate this. Oh, it all, yeah. Yeah. Oh, falls down. This is the real one, baby. I'm telling you. Oh. Okay, so that's the album version. Now, the story behind this song, before I go any further, uh, we were working on the college dropout, like, hard. Like, I hadn't slept in days and was completely exhausted. And it was 7 a.m., and I can't remember for the life of me what other song we were just wrapping up, but we were just wrapping up work on something. It was 7 o'clock in the morning, and I had just turned it in, and I thought I had a date with a pillow man, long overdue, and I'm getting ready to shut the studio down, and the phone rings, and Kanye West calls me with uh, Selena Johnson, and he's in a studio in L.A., and it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, and... Uh, um, and he's like, Ken, I need to put down this guitar on the song right now. And I'm like, okay, send it over. So they sent it over and I learned the chords that they wanted and, uh, and I put it down. Um, and originally, so that guitar back there is a nylon string guitar. I didn't have a nylon, nylon string guitar at, at the time. I only had a steel string regular acoustic guitar. So here's, here's, I just lined up, this is a practice take of like the beginning of me just trying to learn the chords, but this is a completely out of tune uh, steel string guitar from uh, my first attempts at learning the session. Side, side, side. We gon' 
set this party all right. Okay, so that's steel string acoustic, um, just like country guitar, you know, regular acoustic guitar. But steel string has a sound, and nylon has a sound, and nylon is warmer and sexier and just has a vibe to it. And I knew the song needed nylon, and uh, so I did this, and I sent it over, and and they mixed the song right away. I mean, we were on heavy, heavy deadlines, working round the clock. It was crazy. So they mixed the song right away, but uh, I turned it in about 8 o'clock, and then I drove to Guitar Center and waited at Guitar Center until 10 a.m. when they opened. And I walked straight back to the classical guitar section, and I pulled every guitar off of the wall uh, until I found one that played in tune and sounded really nice all the way up and down the neck because classical guitars are notoriously uh, hard to intonate. I found that one. I, <laughs> I bought it right on the spot. I sped straight home from Guitar Center. I put down nylon uh, string parts, which are the ones that you hear there. And I sent him straight off to playing Pat, who was uh, uh, Kanye's a and guy, right arm at the at the time, real crucial to the project. And so, and uh, and Pat calls me back, and he's like, "Oh no, dude, thanks. We already you know we already mixed it. We don't even need these." And I'm like, "Dude, you're gonna want to listen to those. You're gonna want to swap them out. You're gonna want to recall that mix. These are definitely better. Please listen to them." And he's like, "Don't worry about it. But we'll we'll see if we can get to it." I'm like, "Please, please." So they did. Thank thankfully and uh um and they the nylon strings made the final and that shitty steel string did not so <laughs> so what i did was i ran rx8 and removed the nylon string guitars and then i lined up a kick drum underneath and i am gonna see how savvy i am <laughs> at replaying this part i've practiced it a little bit but i mean i'm not really all that here's you know why is that stuck <laughs> Seriously? Okay. Um, hmm. There. Okay. Uh, let me. See. Hey, you gotta move. You gotta move. Okay, you move. All right, you move now. No Mazzy cam for a while. Come on, go, go. Okay. So, do we have? The, is the microphone on? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to turn on the headphones. I love these headphones. They're a little bit big for tracking, but I don't mind them too much. The Audis LCD XCs. They're gods for mixing. Um, and uh, I think I have... Oh, no, I need that. Sorry, I'll try and speed this up. I'm going to mute the... All right. Let's see how I do, Mazzy. Okay, I still remember the part. Let's see if I can put it down. I I think you guys are gonna hear this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not hearing it. Yeah. This the real one, baby. I'm telling you. self-conscious oh, she has no idea what she's doing in college that major that she majored and don't make no money but she won't drop out her parents to look at her funny now tell me that ain't insecure the concept of school right. seems so secure sophomore three years ain't picked the career she like you know live broadcast shit that happens <laughs> i'm just gonna do it to the speakers on i don't think it's gonna change much okay sorry about the slowdown um Oh, we need a I need to hear this more. More kick drum, and I am good. Boom. Okay, one more time. Oh, we need a Dump that and 
and try one more. <laughs> all right let's moment the truth it uh let me turn this up now that i don't have to worry about the headphones oh, Okay, so what I'm doing is uh, when this is soloed, you got to watch that. When that's soloed like that, sorry, when that's soloed like that, you're hearing the original record. And when that is muted, you're hearing what we just recorded. So let's see how I did. Here we go. Starting with Kanye, switching to me. Damn, they match really close. So I actually did put a lot of work into this last night so that this segment would go really smoothly. Uh, but let me show you what I did. So, you know, not, nylon string guitar, real similar to acoustic uh, in mic position. I try and get the microphone slightly, if you're seeing it from that camera, I usually put the microphone about at the 12th fret where the uh, neck meets the body or maybe slightly in on the body. You don't want to put the microphone directly in front of the sound hole because sometimes there's going to be a lot of low frequency coming out right there and it gets too woofy or muddy. So if you put the microphone about right here, depending on how much ambience you want in the room is going to depend on how far back. Typically more focused is about a foot away, a foot and a half. Uh, more ambient in the room could be, you know, three or four feet, depending on how you, you know, how how quiet your room is and the quality of your microphone and quality of your player. Uh, let's see what else. I went through the. This time I'm recording through the Groove Tubes Viper, uh, which is all tube, uh, into the Thermionic Culture the Phoenix, which is a all tube Varimu into the Clarif the Kush Clarifonic, an original Kush Clarifonic, sounds amazing. When I originally cut this record, it was through a purple knobbed uh, Avalon 737, the very, very first run Avalon 737s, which sounded amazing. I used that uh, Avalon on so many different people. Um, hey, Mazzy, you want to settle in and, uh, you know, chill for broadcast? Lay down, babe. Lay down, Mazzy. Come on. Lay down. Um, so, uh, I noticed when I started recutting this that the mixed guitars were really thin and super bright. Check them out. Okay, yeah, really thin and super bright. So, uh, even with a Clarifonic cranked up and a C800 miking this up, I found it was difficult to get enough high end out of the recorded uh, nylons. So first thing I did was I hit them with the UBK um, uh, one on splat. There it is.
then I almost use the API as a tilt. So you can see all the high frequency is boosted, it levels off at 1K, and it starts getting shaved off below. So the entire frequency spectrum I just kind of went like this with. Really did some brightening here, and then uh, actually de-essed it so that some of the really heavy pick attack stuff was minimized. Um, doesn't get in the way of uh, the tone of the guitar. And then Distressor Baby, uh, set to Opto. So 10 to 1... Uh, slowest attack, fastest release. This is the Opto setting. This mimics um, a LA-2A. It uh, sounds great. Check this out. Love it. And then uh, a little bit of Lexicon Room, which is probably what I used back then. Lexicon was really the first uh, plug-in company to perfect reverb. They had the flagship reverbs um, in outboard land back then with the 480L and the 960 and the 224. And uh, when the PCM plugins came out, these were the first ones that sounded every bit as good as hardware. They just sounded incredible. And they still do. Um, so PCM room on this. All right, Kanye West, all falls down. So on on uh, the college dropout, I worked on all falls down, uh, never let you down, never let me down, never let you down. One of those two. Family business, uh, last call, uh, heavy hitters. Um, I know I'm forgetting something in there. Probably one of my favorites. Um, oh man, that was such a fun album to make. But uh, me and Brent, Brent worked on that album a lot with me, and it was just like two weeks of utter exhaustion. I don't think I've been more tired in my life than near the end of that uh, album. But I mean, we knew we were working on a fucking classic at the time. I mean, everybody else was shitting on Kanye West at the time. Nobody was checking for Kanye to be an artist, like nobody. And but I knew. Fucking how incredible he was. That dude is on some next level shit. So thank you for taking me with you as many times as you have, Kanye. I appreciate it. What is next on the broadcast? I can take some Q&A. Let me see what I got in uh, pre-submitted questions. Um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, uh, Jeremy Locke asks, Hey, Ken, who's your favorite artist to work with? And can I get one of those Green Haas shirts? Green Haas? Hey, we have merchandise. Oh, my God. We have a website and a plug-in company. Mixing Night Audio. If you're not, if you just woke up or crawled out of a rock, we have Mixing Night Audio and we just launched Green Haas tonight. Uh, and at the Mixing Night Audio store, we have merch. I, I've never had merch before. Now we have merch. We have masks. Of course we have masks. It's very on brand for us. So we have uh, Green Haas and Mixing Night masks. Uh, we have Green Haas t-shirts and uh, Mixing Night Audio t-shirts, which is what I got on right here. Um, reasonably priced. Uh, get them while you can. Get the plug-in. The plug-in is now $49 forever and ever. Um, and here's the super super check out the mixing night audio website i adore this site oh but you got the credits wrong that's 57 buddy uh, <laughs> um and i think i'm like 74 or 75 uh, that's not right uh, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. we'll fix that later uh and nice things people say oh my god some like first off uh thank you to um man i forget their names but all the dudes down at uh, Doppler Stream Cut Studios down in Atlanta. Big shout out to you guys. I hope you got. I hope you guys are tuning in tonight, and uh, I hope you're throwing down for some ear training. Uh, post up on the chat roll and, and uh, engage with the community. Let let them know how you're doing. Um, but man, all of the heavy hitters that are gravitating towards Green Haas lately has <laughs> been incredible. Like Bob Horn and uh, Eric J and Andrew Whooper and Eric Racy and man, the the love has just been incredible. Busy Work Beats, uh, Austin Hall, man, we just um, piling people up. Josh Gannett, 
Uh, so many people have gotten back to us. The, the, the most heartwarming thing for us, because we really have worked so hard on this, is that the initial emails that I'm getting back, which are not supposed to be like testimonial emails, they're just like first responses from my friends, read like testimonials, like, holy shit, what the fuck did you do? How did you, when can I, please don't tell anybody else about this, let me only use it for me. We've been getting a bunch of those kind of emails, so it's been really encouraging, so... It's kind of amazing. Oh, uh, I have a plug-in company. Who knew? Okay, um, Bob, Bob Horn is live on the... Ch what? Bob Horn is live? Do you guys know that we have, like, a serious heavy hitter on the chat? Um, everybody say hi to Bob. Um, he's a good friend of mine and a fellow Cincinnati boy and a fellow BTS mixer. Man, we have a lot in common. Um... And uh, uh, he was one of the first people I sent Greenhouse to, and, and he f fucking freaked out over it. So thank you so much, Bob. Um, let's see. What is next on the broadcast? Let me get to, oh, okay, a little bit more Q&A. Oh, and Jeremy Locke, who's my favorite artist to work with? I mean, lately, independently, me and Scursley Adams get along great, so he's always fun to work with. Um, but uh, on the, you know, biggest artist in the world level, probably BTS, because, my God, I mean, hey, they're so well-organized, and they are so easy to work with, and every time you get a BTS call, you know you're working on a big album. That's not true. I've been working with BTS since the very, very beginning. I have 36 BTS mixes. I mixed their first album. Um... And, uh, yeah, so that only evolved into that, you know. But I was swinging for the fences for those dudes from jump. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, Dwayne Adams asks, Hey, Ken, how do I submit my beats? Um, I don't take beats. I don't need them. But Mixing Night has beat challenges. And I'm launching a new one tonight, sponsored by Arturia. It's going to be a total throwdown. I'm going to launch it in a few minutes. It's going to be awesome. Um, and... If you haven't, Dwayne, if you haven't seen the beat challenges, you will be in very good company. And it's a great barometer for you to kind of gauge uh, the talent levels around the building and just, uh, yeah, enter the beat challenge. It's so much fun and royalty free. You can't go wrong, you know. Um, let's see. How do I. That's. I don't do that. Oh. Um, sorry, uh, have you worked on production music for film and TV? Love it, Evans asks, have you, Ken, have you worked on production music for film and TV? Um, not production music. I think you mean like library music or like behind, you know, scenes. Me, I work on the only sync stuff I do is like I produce artists and then we get those artists sync opportunities. And that's that. Uh, although lately... I've been working with, if you are um, a regular on the show, you saw Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss, uh, was on the show. He's uh, become a friend and a friend of the show. He's done trailers for, like, Star Wars and Fast and Furious and Mulan. Um, and uh, uh, so he would know a ton about that stuff. And I think we might have talked a bit about that on that broadcast. And he actually says most of what you hear in, especially in TV, is library music. It's not pitched and placed. It's library music that's taken. So there you go. If you're trying to get TV placements, and uh, you're probably not going to get them. Uh, from the chat roll, Chillin24, Sev asks, Hey, Ken, did you work on Donda at all? No, I did not. Um... Uh, you know, I haven't even listened to it yet because, you know, I want to give Kanye the respect of sitting down and giving Don a full listen or two through start to finish um, so that I can really take it in the way he intended, and I just haven't had time to do that, and so I'll get around to doing that. But a um, bunch of my friends worked on Donda, so congrats to all of my friends who worked on that classic, classic album. The Drake one, too. Um, you know, everybody's, everybody's throwing down huge credits right now. I got nothing. Um, I only got Alicia Keys and Sway Lee. I mean, that's, you know... Mm. Uh, um, I gotta keep the show on track. I'm, I'm all off track here. Oh, ear training. Okay, I'm gonna do ear training and then the story of Green Haas. Um, ear training is instrument identification. Some of these are gonna be really, really easy to some of you guys, and some of the others you're gonna listen to and you're gonna be like, what is that? So... 
Number one, I want you to be as specific as possible. If it's a, in a family of instruments, I want the specific one in that family. I don't just want the family. Although, if you only know the family, write down the family. Write down what you know. Write down what you're hearing. As specifically or non-specifically as possible. I think there's a total of 34 points. Uh, and a bunch of them ask you to name either the song or the artist or the movie that the sound is from. So um, there's a bunch of... Uh, just look at your ear training sheets. If you don't have the ear training sheet yet, it's in the description of the video that you're watching right now. Just go down there and click on it and download the PDF and it'll open on your screen and you can follow along. Let's go! And you gotta follow along and watch the screen. Um, I'll tell you in betweens, but uh, yeah. All right, number one. Instrument identification. What are you hearing? Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number six. Number seven. Ten. Name that movie. Thirteen. Name the individual instruments and what the full thing is. Fourteen. Instrument and movie. Last one, eighteen. All right, listen one is done. Here comes listen number two. Lori Lou is in the building with Mazakine.
Number four. Six. Name that song. Seven. What is it? How many? Number nine. Who knows that one? Number ten. Eleven. Name that movie. Thirteen. Fourteen. Name that song. Name that song. Name that movie. Last one, 18. How did you all do? Let me put up the answer key and find out. Boom, answers. Okay, number one was bagpipes and snare drum. I apologize in advance. This is a group called Too Many Zoos, and this is Barry Sax and Percussion. This is two guys making all this noise. This is a drum line. Guiro and Cowbell. Sitar. Ukulele Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Famous version of the song. 100 trombones. Alto sax and piano, and the song is All of Me by John Legend, the Muzak version. Who got this one? English horn. Flamenco and nylon string guitar and castanets.
Glockenspiel from Harry Potter. This is a piccolo, not a flute, it's a piccolo, much smaller. String quartet, one violin, one viola, one cello, one double bass. That's the standard string quartet. Safe and sound trumpet. Safe and sound. It's the electric guitar from Crossroads, Steve Vai. I could almost play that cleanly once. This is a cello. French horn. Viola, solo viola, only one. How did everybody do? Post up your results on the chat roll and let's see who scored the highest. I can't really see the chat roll, but I think Dominic or somebody's going to feed it to me on my screen. All right. Hopefully, you guys aced some ear training. Uh, this is one of my favorites, the uh, instrument identification. <clears throat> so we have on the show Lori Lewis. Oh, it's on the wrong. It's on oh. the wrong. There we go. <laughs> we have on the show Lori Lewis, co founder of Mixing Night Audio, co founder of the Mixing Night Broadcast, started under lockdown, still going. We launched the plugin to keep the show going. Lori is going to bring you tonight. The story of Greenhaas. How the gooey became the gooeyest. Welcome, Lori. Welcome. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, good to have you finally <laughs> on the show. How about that? Here I am. Awesome. You I, I didn't think I'd be here. <laughs> <laughs> and now you are. So you own a plug-in company. What do you think of that? Um, yeah, I own a plug-in company. Holy crap. Uh, I mean, now we just, I mean... And not just any plug-in company, like... The most badass plugin. We we do have a badass plugin. At least we hope it will. Well, we have a be. we have a badass plugin. That's Let's true. see if we have a badass plugin company. That's that true. is a down the road adventure. <laughs> so so uh, so typically Lori is running the cameras during broadcast Indeed. and uh, and she also there's a screen just to my right and she's constantly either feeding me questions or feeding me like turn on your microphone or you know. In fact, if the control the room out, could touch my computer screen, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, we can't the, the <laughs> <laughs> touch it, touch the screen. Um, do you want to uh, narrate the story of Green I, I do, if that's okay with you guys. Since okay, that's kind of my jam. Let's uh, let's get started with. Um, you tell me when to switch, and I will switch. Oh, before we do, This Is Torch got 18 of 18. Oh, This Is Torch got 18 of 18. But Good did, job, But dude. did you get 34 of 34? Did you get 34 That's 34 what I want to know. I mean, Either way, good. impressive. Are you great? Yeah. We'll see. Okay, well, okay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so I'm here to tell the story of Green Haas, how our gooey became the gooeyest. You can... Ah, I got it. I can do it. Okay. Okay, awesome. So... Once upon a time, there were three friends, and they all got stuck together during a quarantine, and uh, they decided to start a, a, a live stream so they could connect with the audio community. And uh, we did, and it was awesome. But then, you know, after um, the quarantine was over and we weren't in lockdown anymore, we had to think of a way to keep funding the show. And so Ken came up with this idea to do a plug-in. And basically, it was born of his workflow. And he had this idea, uh, this concept, and like I said, the essence of the plug-in came from your workflow. And he worked together with Dominic to... Um, to kind of flesh out the elements uh, that are eventually became the plugin of Greenhouse, and um, and so basically they they worked on that together, 
And his idea was to make it an open Haas, right? Get it, the play on words of Haas, the Haas effect. And so Dominic actually drew the first drawing that you see here um, of the, uh, the, uh, the concept, the idea. And, and he uh, gave that off to our amazing um, developer, uh, Gary Grutzek, and who developed our first GUI, right? So this is like the just bare bones, what it looked like when it was first done. But Ken had this vision. He wanted it to be unique. Um, a lot of plugin companies, they either have like flat images, sort of like what you see here, or they'll have um, modeled. like modeled, yeah, kinds of things. So we wanted something completely different, right? So Ken comes to me and he he challenges me to come up with a concept that we can um, flesh out and give to professionals to make it look the gooeyest. And uh, so he's like, listen, I want to make it an open Haas, open Haas. And I'm like, okay, great. And so I take it and I have no idea what to do with it. I, I, I can't, I can't think of any elements that would be in an open Haas. And I, I, I go down a few directions and it just wasn't the right thing. Oh. Hello, Harry. Madsy wants some attention here. So um, I spend a few days on that. And finally, I get back together with Ken and I'm just I'm I'm sort of anxious and, and upset and, you know, whatever. We're talking through all this stuff. And he's like, well, you know, it doesn't have to be open house. So I'm like, oh, well, all right then. So the first thing I think of is dog house, right? Because, you know, dog, you know, Mazzy. Or bird house, right? Because we feed birds. We let, we're out in nature all the time. But there's really not much beyond the four walls and a roof. Yeah. So this boat stuck for a hot minute. I yeah, think. for like a hot minute. And then like the house of cards thing. I love cards, but like mm, that kind of has a negative connotation. And we're like, no. no so no. then it hit me, green house. And I'm like, huh. So I literally, the first thing I did was I, I, I literally Googled the definition of greenhouse, right? A building made of glass panes in which heat and humidity can be regulated in order to grow plants. And I'm like, huh, heat, humidity, regulation. I'm thinking watering cans and temperature gauges and, and things are coming to light that we can play with. And we're just spitballing back and forth. <laughs> that was the best be. part when I, brought, came, I came to Ken with the concept and... I mean, elements came together fast. We just started thinking through things. And before you knew it, we had our very first idea, right? Green Haas was born. This is the very, very yeah, first iteration it, wow. I gave to Ken. So you might yeah. notice that it's not rectangular. Again, I have never used a plugin. I am not a musician. So I didn't even occur to me that, oh, it needs to be rectangular. So... I tried to make it look a little bit too flashy. So one of the first things Ken's like, yeah, I don't want these buttons to be like silver. I want it more cartoonish. But this was like the first draft and we kind of went through and talked about a bunch of things and then we improved it, right? So we pulled in some more fun elements. Um, sundial yeah the, the sundial the... <laughs> i i kind of instead of um instead of what you see now today infrared and ultraviolet right. we had scorch and you know all these different ideas so again right. we played around with it and we improved it some Just more see the basics of the heat thermometer and right. the plant the flowers <laughs> the watering can the timers. right yeah. so we improved it and then we improved it some more and this was the the version that we handed off to the professionals, right? And, and before I show you some of that part of it, I want to talk about some of my favorite elements. And though that these didn't necessarily make, none of these actually made, well, almost none of these made the final version, I wanted to point out a few things. And one of them is the the stages of the plant. I knew there had to be a plant monster. That was like the first thing we came up with was like a plant monster because... You We're into monsters. Monster. Well, right. I mean, we have a greenhouse. We have to have I mean, a plant monster. If you're going to do a plug why aren't you going to do a plant monster? Everybody I mean, you guys see our mugs in. every week. I mean, we're we're into the whole monsters and all that kind of stuff. So we had to do that. So the thing was, none of these these images are basically like, like shutter stock images or, you know, stock images. I guess not shutter stock necessarily, but stock images. But the center one, I, I created myself because we needed five stages, but that stage didn't exist. One of my happiest days I've ever ever had was creating this monster because it took me hours to do but it was super fun and whatever i also created an opaque greenhouse or greenhouse i literally had to make these panes opaque it took me a couple days to do this so just so you guys know this is all new skills for Lori. like <laughs> she didn't 
No. This, this isn't her like college degree or her corporate job no. that she used to do. Or this no. is all just she taught herself this. It's true. It's been it's a awesome. crazy journey. Okay. Um, one of my favorite um, elements I just want to point out here is the tulip. And the reason this is one of my favorite and it had to be in there is because Shoot. our dog... Mazzy is actually, her first name is Tulip. Her middle name is Mazikeen. And uh, so that had to be an, uh, kind of an homage to her. So anyway, we move on. Then we pass it on to the professionals who got involved. And this was the first version that they did. They took our ideas and they, they, they made it original, right? They, they did original artwork and put this beautiful thing together. And we loved it. We couldn't, it was so exciting to see like real professional people put something together. Um, but there were some elements of it that we liked from the original design better. And so we went back and forth with them. They were amazing to work with. And in the end... Wait, oh, wait. Let's point out something really fast. Okay. The troughs are now grass. These were originally water. Oh, yeah. And so you see how, like, ideas begin to come together and change and morph. And right. You just kick ideas back and forth with your creative teams until you get what you want. Yeah, our plant monster didn't have an eyeball or teeth, and it definitely needed teeth. Definitely. And then the, the flowers um, were, they're so cool and they'll be cool for something else, but they weren't quite right. So we, we played a little bit more and then we finally got our version. We went back and forth and this is the version that you guys see today. And one of my favorite things is people give all this feedback about how um, it looks like a video game. And I think that is so cool. That's kind of what we were going for, but I don't actually play a lot of video games so yeah. <laughs> i i love the compliment but it's like kind of funny because that's not really my world but it was super fun to do super fun to be a part of and yeah so that's that's where we are and i just wanted to take a couple minutes to say thank you and i'm i'm going to do this kind of you know ceremony award style so bear with me a second because i'm not normally on camera but there's a few people that i need to thank so just bear with me First and foremost, I want to say thank you to the Mixing Night community. We could not have done this without you. Like, when we came up with this live stream, Ken always says it's the thing we didn't know that we needed. And the craziest part is it was a great way for him to connect with the audio community and to connect the audio community together. I never dreamed I would be a part of that. And so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so it's kind of amazing. And, you know, we watch the broadcast, we see your comments, and you always include love towards me, towards Mazzy, and I thank you for that. So from the bottom of my heart, truly, thank you. It's also awesome to see all the creativity and all just, so we're just totally inspired by that. So just wanted to say that first. Second of all, I wanted to thank you, my darling husband. Hey, baby. So I, I have to say, like, truly, thank you for encouraging me to let my creative freak flag fly and um, see what came up, up with it. It's been awesome. Um, I also want to thank Dominic, right? Dominic has been incredible to work with. He actually helped me with um, our revamp of Audio School Online prior to all of this, and he was great with that. And then working with him, he's just been one of the most positive, uh, creative, funny, smart, just an amazing guy. And Dominic, truly, thank you. It's been an awesome working with you, and I can't wait to keep doing it. Um, also, Gary Grutzek, just really, truly, you are the best. And Rockstar. we're so excited totally that you're Rockstar. part of our team. Uh, Kareen Werner, who helped us with Rockstar. some of the stuff behind the scenes, doing the the delivery for you guys to get the plug-in. So that's awesome. And then last... Um, to Cliff Sims, um, not only are you an amazing human being, but you brought along an amazing team to help us realize our vision. So I just, again, wanted to say thank you to everyone while I had the chance. Oh, and of course, last but not least, the Alpha and Beta teams. Your feedback, your help with all this has been amazing. And I read some of the reviews you guys did on the KVR audio. Thank you. You guys are the best. Oh, I mean, so really, awesome. that was such an amazing thing. So yeah, if anybody truly... wants to review the plugin, go to KV, kvraudio.com. Our plugin is there. Drop us a review. That helps us so much. Unless you shit on it, and then you know. <laughs> yeah, please don't do that. But I think once you hear it, you're gonna love it. So I'm comp. I'll put my name on Greenhouse a thousand. You guys are gonna love that shit. So wait, one one last thing. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't purchased our plugin, I am strongly encouraging you to do so to not only get to play with how fun it is but it's like a monster behind the scenes and it will make your stuff you'll see why we call it a, the best creative vibe machine so 
anyway, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you for having Yay! me on. <laughs> Lori Lewis, okay. founder of Mixing Night. Thank you so much, baby. All right. It's great to finally have you on the show. How about it? All right. I am going to get back to uh, the Beat Challenge. Okay. Yes, the Beat Challenge. Where is the Beat Challenge? Um, <laughs> I don't, I can't even find, I, I can't, I don't know, We're just gonna um, play. where's the beat challenge? Here it is. The one that says beat challenge, Ken. That's, that's the one. Okay. So, the beat challenge this week, brand new, all Arturia sounds. Uh, I cooked up, uh, a starter for you. And I'm going to do it a little bit differently. The link is in the description of the video that you're watching for the starter stems. I'm giving you stems this time. There are six stems in the folder. They all go together. They all work together. You don't have to use them all. You don't have to use more than one or two if you want. But you got to use something from the starter pack. And a little bit uh, special this time, kind of different than what we've been doing. Uh, Len Kuis, that motherfucker, Len Kuis, you know, let me put the microphone in front of me, Ken. What do you say? Uh, uh, live broadcast, people. This is how it goes down. Um, Len Kuis throws me off my game every time. He submitted a full beat. He cooked up this beat that I'm about to play you guys right now. And anybody who wants to enter the beat challenge, who's not a beat maker, but a top liner, if you write songs, then Len Kuis's beat is included in the stems folder. And you can just write a song straight to that if you want to and submit that. That'll be just fine. The uh, beat challenge this time is completely royalty free. You can do whatever you want with these sounds. Uh, use them in your own productions, chop them up, write a song, make a million dollars. Don't give me any of that money unless you really want to and realize that I do a free show that you just won a million dollars from, then you could give me some of it, but I don't, I'm fine. Okay. The other thing I want to show you guys tonight, well, let me play you some of these. This is Len Kuis. Um, I'm going to play you Len Kuis. Listen to all of the craziness because I put Green Haas on every single one of these tracks. Bananas. <laughs> Lewis. That's my voice. Ken's distorted voice. That's Greenhouse, baby. God damn. Okay, so um, you have six stems in there. These are all of the stems. There is a um, splice loop. So, okay, let me show you Let me show you guys these interfaces, because I, I just did something with Arturia for them, and the winners of the contest win these. So uh, this is an Arturia Mini Fuse 2. It's two in, two out. The winner gets this. Uh, second and third place, this is the Mini Fuse 1. Second place gets a Mini Fuse 1, and third place gets a Mini Fuse 1. And, but the real sick thing about these things, okay, they're 192K, which is way more than anybody needs anyway. Um, but they're built really solid, and they sound really good. I recorded this entire thing that you're hearing right now through, uh, this little guy. Um, 
and the vocals and the guitars and all of that shit. Uh, the cool thing that I liked about it is you can keep a guitar and a microphone plugged in at the same time. Uh, and you have like, this is like a DJ knob between the inputs and the, uh, uh, it's like a wet dry. Uh, and the headphone sounds good. So winners get Arturia shit. Um, and uh, uh, the all the, oh, and all of the sounds come with this. So basically what I did was I got this, I, I loaded in all of the software packages that came with the mini fuse. Um, and then I used those to create this starter for you guys. And then Lenku has cooked up this craziness from the stems themselves and served it up to you. And the link for the Beat Challenge starter is in the description of the video you are watching right now. It's got Len Kuis's cook up. You can write a song to that if you want, or if you want to make your own beat, you can use some elements. You don't have to use all of them. It's royalty free. Cook up whatever you want. Okay. Um, so let me show you some greenhouse shit. Because uh, uh, damn, when I was put, so I did this last night, and um, I didn't really realize that greenhouse did some of the amazing, wild, cool shit that it does. Uh, and one of the coolest things was this uh, intro vocal. So this is my distorted uh, vocal that I that I recorded through, I think, Guitar Rig 6 um, and that little interface. That's just me going... And auto-tune. It was super auto-tuned as well. And then fed through a guitar amp, and that's what you get. And then greenhouse that bitch... But watch the automation and listen to how it morphs and changes. This shit blew my mind. What just happened? I mean, I didn't even know that Greenhouse could do that. So now I do. That shit is banana. I did this other really cool swell thing. I think this big hybrid. <laughs> ah, that's Greenhouse. So let me show you a bit about what Greenhouse does if you just got it. The left side is the saturation, uh, you know, the sundial. Hey, <laughs> hey, Mazzy Bear. We have three different types of distortion. These, you can consider it like even, dark, and like Hulk smash. Um, so I find myself typically using infrared. If I really want to dig in and get some extra character, then the ultraviolet and the gamma are go-tos for sure. I mean, you gotta dial up the, the monster a bit. Um, but this is kind of like a, it's an infuser type of a sundial. It just juices things up a little bit. And the heat is like a drive button. Uh, low and high cut filters are super, super usable. Make sure that you're trying these things out. They really impart a super vibe to it. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. And the, so the most powerful knob on the entire thing is the wet dry knob the, the uh, watering can. And the reason is this keeps your center uh, phase, mono phase coherency and mono, mono compatibility. The more to the left, the more dry signal you're using and the more centered your signal is going to be. And, and here you're just adding a little bit of sides. Uh, and then if you want a really drastic, very wide sound without much center or any center, then you just keep dialing it and to be the far, uh, furthest that you want to go. Sorry. And um, one other kind of super trick that I found with this thing is the, the more fertilizer you're using and the, the further to the right that the flowers you're using, typically you're going to want to be drier over here because these things add crazy cool musical artifacts to your, um, to your sound. And 
Uh, typically, they sound best in small amounts. Um, these sound great as like choruses and flangers and spreaders and things like that. But as you move to the right, they get um, more drastic and they do different things. And I'm not going to tell you what they do. You just got to listen. The timers each have six different positions. Each side is completely different. Um, and basically, you, you blend the wet-dry with the timers. So you can set the timers to work with each other or against each other. This would be like a really long time on the right, like a slap, and, and a sh really short time on the left. It kind of goes incrementally like that. I'm not trying to trick you. Um, but all of the timings on both sides are different. And if you're a super pro, then that also tells you you can reverse your pan pots and put it on the one next to you and get uh, 36 more uh Haas effect options because the Haas effect isn't one thing. The Haas effect is a spreading of a mono signal into stereo or the, you know, kind of that very short delays on at least one side. Um, but how you implement the Haas effect totally changes how the Haas effect sounds and works and the coherency and the whole nine. And this cracks the fucking code. I did it and I gave it to you. You're welcome. I've been. I've been using the shit out of this thing. So the song I'm about to show you guys from Cliff Sims, um, uh, in a bit I'm going to do uh, the um, production breakdown after Marcus Manderson, which is coming up right now. Um, I used like 19 uh, instances of Green Haas on Cliff's final production. 19. And that's not like trying. That's just because it has started to become a go-to, and it's so versatile in sound. Let me show you a little bit of the versatility. Here's on a drum loop. And then uh, I use the drum flanger. This is a badass flanger. I can't even believe I built this shit. Uh, kudos to my team. The whole team. We smashed it. We... We smashed it. I love this thing. Um, okay, and then the other cool thing is the clap throw. This thing does unexpected stuff that you just wouldn't expect it to do. I'll turn it off for the next clap. Yeah, that's what it did. So I, I put this underneath the main clap, so this is effect only. That's what this thing does. Vibe for fucking days. Just vibe. Mm. Green Haas, we did it. Okay. Uh, Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night, Man of Mystery, brings you uh, free synthesizers tonight. You know, Vital Synth, he always brings you the free stuff. You know. Marcus Manderson, here we go. What's good, Mixing Night family? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, back with another Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment. In this Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment, we're going to talk all about Vital Audio's Vital Synth. You can check out the website right here, vital.audio, to learn more about the Vital Synth. It is a free synth that you can use in your music productions, in your music creations, whatever you're doing with music creation-wise. You can go to their website, check out their social media, watch some videos, check out some presets. Um, some of them are free, some of them are paid, so you can buy some packs. But... To get some free presets, just go to Google and do Vital Synth free presets or Vital Synth free sounds and just go, scroll through the videos, scroll through all the links there to download all the sounds. I've downloaded a lot of these sounds. Some of them I haven't even got to yet, but there are hundreds and hundreds of free sounds you can use in Vital and you can also find out how to load them up in Vital. I'm going to go over some of those sounds today in this video. So here we go. I'm going to jump over to Logic. Here is the Vital Synth. It is basically a free alternative to something like Serum. If you're familiar with Serum, where you can create sounds, you can design 
design your own sandals. You can even create skins for it. You can learn all about it by clicking these two buttons. Um, clicking that button, you can create your own packs. Uh, if you click the three uh, lines here, you can import presets or import banks. What I want to do first is I want to go to my default skin that I enjoy. It's called uh, Di Diablo, I think is what it's called. I put my faith in Diablo. Um, so I'm going to hit uh, option and click on this, and then you can go to load skin. I'm going to load the skin called Di Diab Diabolic. Um, I really like that skin. It's the red skin there. And now to the sounds. Let's get to the sounds. That's what you came here for. Um, we're going to go through some of these sounds. Again, these are all free sounds, the free sounds and the stock sounds that come with it. I've downloaded all of them, uh, the ones that I could find. There are plenty more out there, but these are hundreds of free sounds you can search for. Let's say you're, you're looking for pluck. You can search for pluck or you can search by category. So let's say I want to pluck lead. There you go. Those are all the lead plucks that I currently have loaded up. So let's just go through a sound. Let's see. Uh, let's go to a pad. We're going to create an idea all from using this one free vital so let's get right into it let me find a decent sound here you know what I'm not even gonna waste time we're gonna go with whatever I come up with so PD empty halls and let's record this Next, let's go to some keys. Let's see if we can find some keys that we enjoy and we will uh, add that to this. I like that hard shot, so we're gonna just go with that. percussion is in here. I haven't used a percussion much. Let's see what this physical tension sounds like. Let's see, maybe we'll throw some green haas, which is out today, right? If I'm thinking about it right. Uh, let's just dial in something really quick. this flute lead to it. We're gonna add this clap to it uh, just to fill out the beat and I think that'll be it. So that's it, Vital Synth, again, free plugin. Go to vital.audio. I will also include a link to vital.audio in the Discord. You can go uh, to Google, do a search for all the free sounds you can download for it, the free sounds and the free presets and the free skins. So a lot of free stuff. Thank you for tuning in. This has been Marcus Madison with another Mixing Night Meta Mystery Moment. Be safe and be well, everyone. All right, all right, peace. Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Another great segment. So I wanted to give a quick shout out to Des Rocks. Just dropped his brand new album, A Real Good Person in a Real Bad Place. Me and Brent Colatalo are the production team catalyst, and we produced the song Don't Hurt Me. Don't Hurt Me. Don't Hurt Me, Baby. This is one of the favorite songs that me and Brent have ever produced together. I fucking love this song. It is an absolute juggernaut. Uh, whenever they get around to dropping it as a single, hopefully it'll do what we all think it's going to do. Uh, I'm going to play you 30 seconds of it just into the first chorus and let the first chorus smash you in the face so you remember it. And then I'm going to be on to Cliff Sims. Blows me up like a missile. But now is not the perfect time to say I was lonely, to say I won't leave the triple. Be patient, wait for it, wait for it.
Don't hurt me, Mazzy. And then you gotta hear the ending. This is just some next level shit. Des rocks. Don't hurt me. Mm. Produced by Catalyst. Me and Brent Colatalo. Congrats, Brent. We got a big one right there. Uh, let's see. What is next on the show? Cliff Sims. Uh, you, Your Mom, and Me is a song I just produced for him. Uh, here is... So his uh, Telegraph Creative Company, they did uh, the GUI for Greenhouse. And I produced You, Your Mom, and Me for Cliff. It was a great trade. And uh, Cliff um, gave the song to his staff and had them create this absolutely amazing uh, lyric video. Uh, probably the best lyric video I've ever seen made to a song that I've ever produced. Um, this is just so exceptional. Um, to think that somebody or probably a team of people created this whole thing. I'm just going to let you watch like a minute of it because this, just the way this whole thing unfolds is really brilliant. Then I'm going to pull up the session. A family never knew is coming for you and it'll be more than you ever dreamed. I don't know who you are, but soon I'll meet your face to face. Oh, and I will never leave you here, never in a million years. You know, I never leave the ones I love alone. Nope. This video is just so incredible. Wow. Uh, I'll tell you, you know, being a creative to have uh, something created to something that you created after the fact on this level uh, to this song is really, I'm just, uh, everything about the way this song has been coming together has just been really awesome. When, when, Cliff, when Cliff brought me the song, uh, I hope I'm not selling him up the river. He was he was just like, all right. Now, the only thing I got to ask of you is you got to make me look cool to my company. That's all I want. <laughs> I was like, I was like, done. Easy. So, <clears throat> and here's just a quick aside while I'm launching uh, the session for you, your mom and me. That was the final. That's the lyric video out on YouTube. Please support uh, I want to play you an early version of this because, you know, as a producer, it, it you take a song like this and it's, you know, it's a sappy ballad about a family coming together. It, it is what it is. It's super adult contemporary and, you know, it's very easy to just make it what it's crying out to be. And I was like, nope, we're going, we're going to make a left turn and we're going to go in a different direction and, and I'm going to find a way to make this song just really different and unique and cool and um so it took oh god man i struggled with this song because i knew there was some way to do it i just couldn't find it here's the first version that i actually put some work into that <clears throat> that i eventually abandoned most of because it was just like too it was too lullaby-ish a fan Some of the 
the plugins aren't playing back. But anyway, real like, you know, chimey, dreamy keyboards. It totally made sense with the lyric. It totally would have worked and nobody would have questioned it. And I've been like, oh, dreamy keyboards for you, your mom, perfect. And I was like, no. <laughs> I searched and searched and searched until I finally found, I don't know, <clears throat> I do know. There was a specific inspiration, which I'm not going to divulge here, but um, when I found the vocal loops, uh, this is kind of like a green hoss distorted spread vocal loop matched with another vocal loop. When I put the vocal loops together underneath, I, I literally, here's a production tip for you young producers who think production is fucking easy. I must have auditioned a thousand sounds until I found the one that worked for this, but I think it, that that was worth it because I needed the exact right signature sound that I knew was somewhere doing something that would really marry to this track. I had, we cut the vocal to just piano. So it was piano vocal and I could really, <clears throat> I find songs like this, really emotional, passionate songs. Uh, if they're piano songs, it's, it's best to cut them to piano, even sometimes to cut them to really dark piano, take a lot of the top end off of the piano so that the vocalist can hear their voice really clearly and uh, presently while they're recording. And sometimes you just get these really intimate moments that you can't get if they're singing into a full production and can't hear every tiny nuance in their voice. So pro tip there. Um, anyway, that's how we, we cut Cliff, just to piano and voice. And this is the final that I just played, but um, the uh, here's the, the two loops. A family And it's just, this is a royalty-free loop out of some sample library that I have somewhere that I either bought or got off Splice or something like that. <clears throat> and it was literally one of a thousand I auditioned until the right one hit. And then when I, when, as soon as I heard it, I knew it. I was like, ah, oh, found it. <laughs> and then the rest of the song kind of came together from there. But I ended up, I told Cliff, this is super meta. Um, all of these orange dots are early instances of Green Haas. Uh, when it was in its first build that uh, that Lori showed um, earlier, where is uh, here we go? Um, I took these out of Cliff's session, so this is pig bells, um, and this is so this was like the first working copy, full version working copy like this of Green Haas. Um, I was using others before that, but this is the one that started making sessions regularly, and I used 19 instances. I shit you not, 19, you can count them up as they go by, instances of Green Haas on creating this song. It's just so versatile. It does so much that, yeah. Anyway, the coolest thing I wanted to show about this <clears throat> was Mazzy needs a treat. Oh, my goodness. She is so cute. Is uh, this vocal 808 shit that I did in the bridge. Listen. Listen to how distorted the vocal is. With just a step. And I will never leave you here. Never in a million years. You know, I never leave the ones I love alone in the day. Okay. Ken, how did you distort that voice, Ken? I didn't distort the voice. The voice is not distorted at all. That's the that's the Billie Eilish shit. You just turn up the fucking 808 until it distorts the entire mix bus and takes the vocal with it. Here, let me show you. Leave the ones I love alone. Ones I love alone. I never leave the ones I love alone. love that effect it's just super overdoing it with the 808 to the point that the speakers are really kind of begging for you and it just takes that vocal when it's so in command with just the vocal and the 808 and just shakes that vocal <laughs> and your ears don't know what to do with it it's such a cool effect 
Um, <clears throat> what are some of the... So, uh, the other thing that I just wanted to talk about with you creators out there is how to get a great vocal performance. Because, you know, I knew Cliff before his politics days and, and all of that stuff. And he was a lead singer in a rock band and wrote great songs and sung them. And I always really liked his voice and I never got to produce him back then. And I always thought like, you know, oh, when I get a hold of that voice, what I am going to do to it, because I always knew he had way more in the gas tank than what he was ever putting out. And people just didn't know how to produce him. Straight up, he was produced like shit. Sorry if you were the one that did it, but anyway. He shows up here, and he's super nervous and apprehensive because he's never sounded like as great as he can on a record. He's sounding really good, but <clears throat> I knew what he was capable of. He came in with all kind of insecurities, and and part of your job as a producer is to have a pretty good sense of what you know you can get. And I usually have a pretty good sense of what I know I can get, and I try not to overpromise to my artist. And I try not to underpromise, you know. And if I'm feeling good about the shit, I'm gonna be like, "Look, Cliff, your voice. When we're done today, your fucking voice is going to sound. Um, you're not even gonna believe it's you. And your wife won't believe it's you either. And when he sent it to his wife, she didn't believe it was him. And and it's just it's about coaching a performance and giving the vocalist and the giving the artist space to be an artist because. <clears throat> being an artist has nothing to do with singing. Being an artist has nothing to do with singing. Being an artist has to do with connecting with your audience, your fan base, whoever is listening. That is artistry. And um, finding ways to connect to that fan base is, you know, <clears throat> so anyway. Where was I going with that? I can't remember. Um, So vocal performances. So the most important thing for me as a producer was to get him mentally in the frame. Of, and I do this with every artist. <clears throat> it's just different with every artist. But get him mentally in the frame of mind that he didn't have to think about his voice anymore. That <clears throat> the moment he put his headphones on, they sounded like a record. His voice was so dialed in, it sounded like that in his headphones when we were recording. The best rough mix I could give him. Um, just, you know, it's just piano and voice, but <clears throat> but his headphones sounded incredible. Give You know, that gives him, like, the instant confidence of, like, oh my god, I sound great. And that's a magic trick with a with a with an artist. If you, you know, most artists aren't used to putting on their headphones and having them sound great. If you as a tracking engineer can perfect that skill, you will always work. Because every artist that comes to you is going to put those headphones on for the first time cutting vocals with you. And they're going to be like, yo, dude, what are you doing different than everybody else? And that's what I do. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, where was I? So... You know, guiding him to the confidence of letting go of his fears and just singing and then not being able, uh, not being afraid to make mistakes is really the biggie. And what I tell artists, this is like cheat code shit right here, so pay attention. What I tell artists is, I don't hear the mistakes, and I don't. I'm not listening for the mistakes. I don't give a fuck about the mistakes. Who? You sing a wrong note in my studio? Who cares? I didn't hear it. Literally didn't hear it because I'm not listening for all the bad shit. I'm paying attention to those moments that my heart just goes like, oh, fuck, what happened? Oh, that line. Oh, my God. I'm listening for the for the those moments. I don't give a fuck if you hit wrong notes. That's why we cut multiple takes. We do take after take. Probably this song we did maybe 18 or 20 takes. And and then I comped it down to a finished lead vocal that sounds like the one single time that Cliff sang it best in his entire life. And it has all of the emotion and the chances and everything. And you can get all of those emotions and chances and all of those things because you put the artist in the space to not fear making mistakes and to go for it. 
And if the artist is staying in their comfort zone, they're going to give you an 80 to 90% performance. It's going to be really good. That performance is going to be rock solid, really good. You know how many performances are really good and move people? Really good doesn't move people. Great moves people. Inspired moves people. That's what moves people. So <clears throat> as a producer and as an engineer, everything that you can do to put the artist in the vibe, for me, it's usually put something up on on the screen that distracts them from the fact that they're cutting vocals. And I can't remember what we did with Cliff. But uh, um, like with Scrizzly Adams, it's Lana Del Rey videos because they're super Americana and she's gorgeous and... and and it takes his mind off of his his voice. And, you know, it wasn't Lana Del Rey with Cliff. I can't remember what it was. But, uh, I'll have to ask him. Cliff, what was it? Um, I'm sure he'll tell me tomorrow or maybe tonight. Uh, anyway, so <clears throat> back to the important shit. Vocal production. It is really becoming a lost art. Uh, vocal comping is becoming a lost art. Um, I... Literally, probably comped this down from 15 or 18 takes. I wish I would have counted them. That's pretty normal for me. And I produce until I know I have great, solid takes. And then when I have... When the artist has delivered to me something that I know, like, yes, I can comp the shit out of this, and I'm going to get a great comp already. Then I can put the artist even more at ease and tell them, like, look, <clears throat> I have a great comp already, but you're, in, you're still in your safe zone. Just try shit. Be adventurous. And know that I am only looking for in these takes maybe one or two lines out of the whole take. You know, that's... But if we take two or three or four takes and I get two or three or four magical lines in the whole song that the only way you would have gotten those was an inspired moment of not thinking and just feeling completely free to fuck up and make mistakes or find magic. And that's how you get it. And if you're afraid to make mistakes, you never get there. So <clears throat> as a producer or uh, tracking engineer, always put your artist in the best mental frame of mind possible and never, ever, ever go negative unless you want the session to be over. Um, the moment that negativity per permeates the air in a vocal session, the vocalist loses confidence, and that's that. If they're not singing in tune yet, then you either need to determine, is auto-tune going to fix this after the fact, and I'm good, and I don't have to worry about it, which is almost always the case, um, or uh, do you... You know, if they know they're out of tune, just take more takes and try and be encouraging. Put They're probably singing out of tune because they're uncomfortable and they're nervous and they're scared and they know they're singing out of tune and it sounds like shit and oh my god, it's a spiral and it keeps getting worse. And it's your job to take them out of that spiral, put them back at ease, and make them deliver the performance of their life. And I've gotten a few of those out of Cliff. Um, he is the, the vocalist that I always knew that he could be. Um and uh and is really you know he's he's forest gumping his way through life I'm walter middying it right next to him uh what else do i have any um duh, duh, duh. here i'll take a question music production videos asks from the chat roll hey ken hey music production videos uh since so many of us do low end heavy music these low end heavy music like bass music should we definitely be using a master bus compressor with a high-pass filter so the bass does not trigger the compressor? <clears throat> yes. Well, not definitely. If it works for you, yes. If it doesn't, no. Here's one. So this is, I have the outboard uh, rack mount Manly Very Muse sitting in my rack five feet away. And these are my match settings to it. Usually, honestly, um, I, I, I can change this. Uh, my outboard looks something like this. G gain is all the way up. Slowest attack, slowest release. High pass filter side chain, which I think eliminates everything under 100 hertz. That's your, your big question there. And threshold all the way down, so I'm getting as much reduction as possible. But with these settings, usually you got to push the shit out of it to even get like 6 or 8 dB of reduction. So I'm pushing it really hard. Um... And the needles almost never move. Once it engages, it's sitting at like minus four or minus six. It, it doesn't. It's a really super slow. I don't know why this shit is glue, but this is the cheat code. This shit is glue. Um, 
but I use compressors after this one. This is a color uh, box for me. It's not a finish box. Finishing boxes would be like True Peak or uh, like BX uh, BX Digital True Peak or Fab Filter Pro L2 is a common finisher for me. Or I like Slate FGX for rough mixes. The Slate FGX it's it's like 99% to the True Peaks 100. It's so fucking close. But the the um, meter on the FGX I have come to really uh, that's my go-to. I know what it tells me. And with my mixes on the Slate FGX meter, when my loudest part of my mix is hitting between minus 7 and minus 8, minus 9 on average, you know, if you get momentary peaks up in the 6s, no big deal. But your average is sitting in the mid-7s, uh, mid-8s. That's about where I finish my mix bus with, um, with what the Slate Digital RMS meter tells me. To get there, I usually use Pro L2 or True Peak after something like Master Desk or uh, what did I use here? Here's BX Limiter. Boom. So I use that on this song. Um, one of the cool things about BX Limiter, let me show you this real quick, because most of the other limiters don't do this, and this is really the cheat code. Oh, I, is, is there a smaller? Um, there we go. It still doesn't show it. Darn it. Um, okay. There's a wet-dry knob at the bottom of this that I can't really show. It's, it's too big for the screen. Um, the wet-dry knob is really cool because what you can do is you can really overdrive a little or a lot. You can overdrive your mix bus. You can too much limit your mix bus and then back off the wet-dry... So you're adding some of the clean mix bus pre-processing with some of the really dirty over-compressed. And you get these tones that you really don't get in, in any or many other ways. And I think that's kind of a superpower of the, the BX True Peak. Um, also, it's got this kind of like, a, I guess that this is a parallel processor here. So this kind of already juices it up a little bit. But I find that wet-dry knob uh, is really a, a super, super musical um, thing. And the foundation is a tilt. So this tilts it. The whole frequency range tilts it a little bit more bass, and this way it tilts it a little bit more treble. Not not a ton, but you know it can can really save you in a pinch, um, and especially if you're just not dialed in by then, then this the tilt can really help you. Okay, what 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 other things can I teach you guys tonight? I don't know. Is there any questions? Um, let's see. Uh, you know the other really important thing about this song uh, was dynamics that I really wanted because the song was, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a song about a family coming together through adoption. It, it is what it is. It's, um, you know, <laughs> it's a niche song, but, uh, to us, it's a really personal important, uh, personally important song. And I'm, uh, you know, it really resonates with me. It makes me think of my mom first, and then Mazzy next, and then all of our other dogs next. And uh, and my parents fostered uh, a, a kid when I was super little. We had a, a foster um, for a while, and uh, yeah, it's man, there's so many memories that that are uh, conjured up when I listen to the song. And uh, it was such a fun and, and rewarding song to be a part of. Um, so I am going to wrap up the broadcast. It's 10 p.m. Uh, Green House is live. Oh, my God. Green House is live. Go get Green House. Support the show. Thank you so much. Please tell everybody about Mixing Night Audio. Uh, trust me. If you don't tell them, they don't know. You know a secret. Spread the secret. <laughs> tell everybody about Green Hoss. We so appreciate it. We will be back in two weeks with another throwdown. Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Uh, I don't know what the next broadcast is going to be, but I will bring the thunder. So uh, until then, this is Ken Lewis and the whole uh, Mixing Night staff here. We absolutely love this show. The community is fantastic, and we will see you in two weeks. Thank you so much for supporting us.